What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons In Focus podcast brought to you by Ticketmaster, recorded in the Ticketmaster podcast studios. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney, the man of the hour. Brand new, it, th- this is really fun to say, yeah. brand new Atlanta Falcon safety, Jesse Bates. Jesse, welcome to the program. Welcome to the organization, my friend. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah, and we're not going to start with all the cool things that have happened today, mm-hmm. signing your second contract, coming yep. to a new team. Um, we want you to take us back. I don't have the exact date, so pardon me. But take us back <laughs> to uh, Cincinnati Bengals versus Baltimore Ravens. I believe you were in the fifth grade. Right. Right? Your first NFL game. Tell us about <laughs> that experience. Who who was with you? What that experience was like seeing NFL football for the first time. Yeah. Um, you know, usually that's a, you know, a father and a son type of um, you know, event to go to for yeah. your first football game. Um, being blessed, being raised by a single mom. Uh she was took me and my sister to our first uh NFL football game and I remember seeing Ray Lewis and you see Chad Ochocinco, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, really good players on both teams um, and being able to experience that with my mom. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then come 2018, I, I get drafted to the Cincinnati Bengals. I know, so, right? Full circle. Uh, yeah, it's full circle. Um, such a, a, a cool moment for not just me, but for my family as well. So you're from Fort Wayne, Indiana. How f- that's like a drive, maybe three hours, something like that. Yeah, it's only three hours from Cincinnati. Yeah. Right. So that must have been cool because I, I don't that you were so close to mm-hmm. where you're from, so then your family can see you. Can, I don't know if this happened or not, but when you're in 2018, were there and you come out there in that stadium, yeah. were there any flashbacks or any thoughts after you got drafted by the Bengals? Like, oh my gosh, like that was my first game. Now I'm back here. I'm on the field. Yeah, um, my mom, she does a really good job of just remembering a bunch of stuff, <laughs> having yeah. all the pictures. Mom's she's like that. she's like that type of woman. She has all the pictures. So um, right when I got drafted, that's the first thing she thought of um, was being in that stadium already and um, only being three hours away. And, you know, the first thing I thought about was, um, do I get discount on tickets or like <laughs> You're probably do something? Need all um, so, yeah, I spent a lot of money on my first <laughs> – <laughs> Yeah. Uh, first year with a lot of tickets. Yeah, so, yeah. I oh can imagine. Did it make you feel old when he was talking about like Ray Lewis? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he was it? in fifth grade. Uh huh. And I was not in fifth grade. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because yeah, I also was in like elementary school when <laughs> when Ray was at the top of. I'm not going to mention how old I was <laughs> at that point. <laughs> like we're just going to move on from that. Yeah, I, I was definitely old enough to drive at the time that Ray Lewis was doing that. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, um, I, yeah, a, a kid from Fort Wayne, right? And you talked about your your mom, Teresa, mm-hmm. right? And kind of that, that role that she played in your life and yep. raising you and your siblings and stuff like that. So let's just get kind of right to that part of it. I yep. mean, what did your mom mean to you? Mm-hmm. Because from what I've read, it's like work two jobs, but you yeah. were never disadvantaged yeah. because of that. She really – did everything that she could to put you in a position to be where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think she did a really good job of just really setting an example, um, what work ethic is and, uh, what hard work can get you. Um, I think, uh, it's sometimes it's, it's kind of cliche, but, um, just having my mom, it's just always been a blessing just being able to have that relationship. Um, you know, she's my, mom she's my dad she's my best friend my brother whatever you want to call it she's everything in one um and as many jobs as she worked um you know for us to have a great Christmas or whatever it was uh she never missed a game either so um that support system that I had you know growing up um really meant a lot um how you spend your time and just multiple um aspects of life that I was able to um not look on a video and look at you know, my favorite, um, athlete doing it, but I was able to watch my mom do it. Um, so it was a really, really, yeah, a really cool experience. Um, and I, you know, I get emotional about it and I'm able to joke about it now with my mom, but, um, yeah, I don't know what I would do without her Mm -hmm. for sure. When you kind of like think back to your younger years and you're kind of getting into football, what type of football fan was she? (laughs) Is she? Yeah, she was always, uh, she loved the Bucks. Um, really? She loved, she loved the Bucks. I'm, I shouldn't have said this on this <laughs> podcast, but 
Uh, she loved the Bucks, and she just always knew about the game of football. She always was a Duke fan. She loved watching basketball. So um, there was a reason why I was always so interested in basketball, baseball, football. Um, just because my mom almost instilled it in me um, yeah. and didn't force it or anything. We just like watching it and wa- like watching good ball. Um, and it's, you know, translated. And now she's watching her son play some good ball. So uh, it's it's pretty cool experience. Like I said, it's cool, cool story. What, ta- what type of, um, I guess, like fan in the stand is she? Like, is yeah, she loud yeah. or is she yeah. more like reserved? And then you get home and it's like, hey, babe, you need to do this better. Yeah. Um, my mom is behind the scenes. You you okay. think uh, she she talks herself up really good. I, I, <laughs> I haven't been able to watch her in the stands, but uh, she I mean she gets after it a little yeah. bit. She gets herself a you know a couple drinks and <laughs> um, and really enjoy a football game like a fan. Um, but also watching her her kid go out there and do what he loves to do. So uh, yeah, she's she's behind the scenes. She don't want to be seen. She don't want the camera on her or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you guys will know who she is by yeah. the end. <laughs> but so, I can't wait. so like when you were in high school or in Pop Warner, I'm not sure if you mm-hmm. played Pop Warner, but like, could you pick her voice like out of the crowd? Like, there's this, you know, like you could be like, okay, like mom saying something, or, or in the crowd, was she sort of like? Yeah, my chill. mom. Yeah, that's my mom. She's uh, unless she's had a few drinks in her. <laughs> uh she's pretty quiet yeah she's pretty quiet for the most part um she's she's very humble i think mm-hmm. that's where i get that from as well just um doesn't need to be seen she know knows her, her place um she's know who she is and what she's worth and uh, what she's done for people um and don't really ask for anything back so uh that's just who she is man like i said you guys will know her uh, by just being in the stands at every single home game, I'm pretty sure. And, yeah. Uh, she'll probably be commenting underneath the podcast. Right, she's, right. She's uh pretty legit. Hi, Mom. Yeah, she's pretty. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty. She'll see this interview. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she will. I love that. <laughs> now, uh, what's the best thing, the most special thing that you've been able to do for her since you've gotten in the league? Um, I think the biggest thing is is um probably getting her to be able to you know be debt free. Mm. Um, financial freedom is probably the, you know one of the biggest things that uh, you know I try to focus on right now with my family and um, being able to spend as much time as they can. Like I said, with my mom always being at work, um, I think time is very important when you're you know raising kids and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I just want to. I think the biggest thing, like I said, was taking that weight off her shoulders and um, being able to live free, being able to travel to away games away nfl games like who would have ever thought that and uh like i said i think she deserves that so um so so she can go explore the world and uh have different experiences and also take my siblings and uh, my grandmother you know other family members along with her so uh it's not just about her um it's about uh, i know she's the backbone of it and she makes a lot of the calls so uh being able to have her her time I think is very important now I know I know you have probably a ton of male influences in your life but Mm -hmm. I love this conversation about your mom and and maybe not even just your mom but also maybe like grant your grandmother Mm -hmm. your aunts to have like a female support system that helped you to realize your potential as a person and a football player I mean how has that shaped you into the person that you are today yeah um like I said you know when uh, when you're surrounded by that all the time and you see, um, you know, them work their butts off and see why they're not there at sometimes is because they're working hard. They're trying to do stuff to, um, you know, put their family in a better place. So, um, you know, it's just something that I naturally just grabbed on. And, um, like I said, they, they sacrifice so much and it's not their fault at times. It's not their fault at all, but it's just who they are, um, as a person and, like I said, they don't ask for anything um, back when they do certain things like that. And um, so it's just really cool to be able to um, have that impact and, and, and show the love back because um, a lot of time they don't get a lot of it. And um, being able to be a son and, um, you know, I'm living my dream, but I think my mom lives in hers as well. And I, I think that the cool thing is we, we've talked about what, this second contract right <coughs> a lot of the fans they see 
like a dollar sign with some numbers yeah. after it. Yeah. But it seems to me like you're looking at it with the impact that can be made with it, yeah. right? So you you talk about ways to help like help your mom and help your family, but you're taking it a step further, yeah. right? With with the JB3 Single Mothers mm-hmm. Initiative. Mm-hmm. Tell us more about that because, yes, you're helping out your immediate family, yep. but for a long time you've been doing work to help out other people in a similar situation. Right. Um, I think that uh, with the JB3 Single Mothers Fund, um, I, I told a couple people on some interviews today, um, over the next four years I've committed a million dollars to be able to hey impact, um, you know, be able to uh, join some initiatives. Um and have an impact here in Atlanta and also in my hometown as well. So, uh, like I said, it's just when you have, when you've been experienced, um, something, you know, people go through different things. Sometimes it's, you know, illness or something and that's what they want to impact. But, um, in my situation, like I said, I was raised by a single mom. So being able to have that impact, um, on single moms with my mom alongside of me, I think, uh, is really important. Um, because like I said, it's not, always you know the single mom's fault it's not Mm -hmm. they just always got to sacrifice so much and you know make up so much time for this person or that person so uh just being able to um show the appreciation for them um is something that's very important to me that's awesome i mean i I just think that's really cool yeah i I I mean and you look around you know this league and so many people that can relate to it and Mm -hmm. um it's not something i i'm doing for likes or you know repost or anything it's just something that uh when i pass away one day they they don't nobody's going to care about this contract Mm -hmm. extension that you got and how much money nobody's going to remember that people are going to remember what kind of man you were what kind of character that you had uh when you at the lowest when you're at your highest so uh those are all things like i said that i've been able to learn and uh get that from you know the loved ones in my family yeah um voice cracking (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna read you to you for a second (laughs) this this, this, is it's like inception yeah uh, it's from the athletic in 2020 it's when the first possibility of an extension with cincinnati was even Mm. allowed um but it's just i don't know I, i read it i was like super inspired um but basically uh the athletic kind of asked you like what would it mean for you to sign your second contract and this is more than two years back and you said that uh it's all about the, the people who put in so much sacrifices and wisdom into me throughout the years. Everybody looks at Jesse Bates, um, but it's the people I've been surround, surrounded by that deserve all the, all the praise. Um, and basically just saying that like, because who I am today is what they raised me to be and be able to spend that time and that have that impact on other people is what I'm looking forward to. Yep. Like that's what you said <laughs> three years ago, yeah. right? Yeah. And now here you are able to do it. Yep. Like so many decisions, right? The decision to leave Wake Forest, maybe mm-hmm. we can, you know, to, to leave really early yep. to, to get to this point now, <laughs> right? All the hard work, all the sacrifices, all the games, never missing anything yep. to get to this point. Like, what does it feel like you've been dreaming and talking about having these impacts? Mm-hmm. What's it like now that you're here? You've signed on the dotted line. You're still living your dream. There's still better ahead for yeah. you. But I'm saying like this moment must really mean something because of what we've talked about. Yeah. Um, you know, like you said, it's it's a moment that, you know, a lot of guys in this league don't get a chance to get to. Yeah, for um, sure. And um, being able, like I said, I know the work that I put in to get to this point. So um, not that I only deserve this. I think my family deserves this. Like like I said, in 2020, I think yeah. the people who um, instilled so, mu- so many principles and values into my life, they deserve this as well. So it's not just about how I feel or anything like that. Um, I just think that it's just so much more that I can do um, than just getting an extension mm-hmm. or the second contract, um, even though that's a huge thing. And I'm blessed to, and super humble to be able to go sign on that dotted line. But uh, there's just so much work that is left to do. Um, I just haven't tapped in um, with the inner, the highest Jesse base, the third yet. Yeah. And um, I'm going to continue to work to that point. Um, and just because I got a nice uh, contract or whatever doesn't mean I'm going to be a different person. I'm going to be the same guy and walk in this facility and um, impact people's lives um, on the field and off the field. Ooh, I love it. And, I mean, we're going to get a front row seat to kind of yeah. 
what is it like level up jesse yeah. like a full level up like when you're playing like mario kart yeah. or whatever a yeah <laughs> now bit. when we were doing uh research as we do mm-hmm. for the podcast um it was really interesting to me how and i didn't know this about you before this but like how business minded you are and i'm not just talking about like oh like just financial stuff i'm talking about like investing mm-hmm. strategies and i'm talking like stock dividends and all this stuff i have to tell you my mind does not work that yeah. way yeah. i wish with everything in my heart being in soul <laughs> that it did i so wish it did but i'm so i just i just don't think like that so yeah. for you like why was finance the finance world mm-hmm. the business world something that you kind of gravitated towards yeah um you know going second round um you know is a is a pretty good spot to get yeah. drafted yeah. in yeah pretty uh, good sure yeah. <laughs> um but just always having that um that humble mindset i think um of nfl stands for not for long and always just trying to build myself and continue to grow in every aspect of my life um and i think the investment part when you when you get money um whether you you can ab- abuse it or mm-hmm. you can change a lot of people's lives, including um, people that's not even a part of your family. Right. Um, so being able to have, um, I have a great management team um, and Rise Sports Advisors that um, helps me with that. Um, I, my mind isn't all the way developed yeah. in the <laughs> world yet, but yes, I have made um, you know some great alternative investments and um, continue to learn in that world as well. Um, got a little bit more money to invest as well so i'm very excited for that um part of the of my life as well i think that's cool because again i just i never think about yeah. investing <laughs> strategies right. and i think that's cool and the fact maybe that maybe like, jesse can teach like a little seminar during yeah the we should have that, like that would be finance cool. with How about jesse the like a okay? symposium or something <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. I, i'll really be there um, <laughs> catch me in the front row <laughs> you're, you're you're joining a team with some people that you kind of know yeah mm-hmm. al- already with um AJ. Through, yeah, through yep. your agency, right? Yep. AJ and Casey Hayward and Kyle wow. Pitts and some mm-hmm. of those guys. Just having that level of familiarity, yep. um, how nice is that going to be that you're not walking into a bunch of complete strangers? It, one, you know that they're – I mean, Casey's been around for yeah. – he might be my age, right? He, he's been around <laughs> forever. But you know what I mean? You, you've, you've got these guys that are talented. It's true. He's I'll watch have to, and be it's like, true. i got to ask him where he was when yeah. I was in the fifth grade. <laughs> Please do. Please do. I, I would love to hear that answer. Uh, but having some familiarity, especially on the back end, yep. must be nice. And you, and you know they're good, so you can see potential working with guys yep. that you know. Yeah. Um, it's always nice to have familiar faces um, mm-hmm. when you walk into a new, uh, new place. Um, and like I said, I'm just excited to get to know the people I don't know as well. Um, but yeah, just having, you know, even coach Jackson, uh, he yeah. was with me That's um, right. in my, in my fourth year in Cincinnati when we went to the Super Bowl, um, and being able to have those conversations, just, um, being comfortable asking the right questions and there's, you know what I'm saying? There's always the right or wrong answer or questions or whatever. Um, just having that being comfortable to be yourself, um, and, you know, come in here and work and gain the respect for the rest of the guys. Is there such a thing as a DB getaway? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I was getting ready for a no comment, sir. The reason why he asked that is because, uh, gosh, this is probably like last year. Eight, I did an interview with AJ and Casey together, mm-hmm. and I was kind of asking, like, when's the, when's the first time that y'all ever met? And they're like, well, we have the same agent, and we sometimes, like, you know, mm-hmm. the, the DBs get yeah. away, and we yeah. go do some things. And I'm like, so when you signed, I was like, <laughs> well, shoot. We got to find out about the DB getaways. Yeah. So uh, every every year our agency has like a pro week where mm-hmm. um, they bring all the pros in. And uh, I think it's right before training camp. Right, so people yeah. are training. Um, and we'll have a couple of days where uh, you're just getting, you know, some DB work in with, um, you know, guys all over the league. That's with the agency. and um, But I thought you were talking more about the DB trip within the team. Um, I, oh. think that's something, <laughs> no, no, no. I think that's something that we have to uh, that, that we, we might incorporate. Have to turn some yeah. Micro. yeah, oh, we, absolutely. We gotta, we yeah, gotta y'all got to do it now. We got to do a DB trip yeah. every off season. I think Where'd you like to go? We're going to leave that. Uh, <laughs> no <comment. laughs> we're going to say no, we're gonna say no comment to that yeah. one. We'll, we'll um, keep you guys updated. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> so but, uh, before I got here, I covered the Raiders for a long time. Um, and the reason why I, I asked that is Rod Woodson, who I've met a couple times. 
great human. Also went to Snyder High School. Yeah. Have, you, have you guys had a chance? Which is where which Jesse is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Let's include yeah. all the yeah. information. Right. Which is where Jesse <laughs> went. Yes, in case um, no one knows. <laughs> have you had a chance to meet one of the legends of the game? Any yeah. interactions with him? Any good Rod Woodson stories? Yeah. Him? So, um, you know, going to the same high school, um, him being a Hall of Famer, um, having a bunch of success in the NFL. There's not a lot of Indiana guys that come out. Yeah, you that's know? true. <laughs> um, especially from Fort Wayne. So, uh, like I said, just being able to have his um, – he has like a memorabilia type of uh, showcase in our in our hallways, you know. So being, what, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, I was walking past that thing every day. And, like, yeah. one day I want to I have something like that in here. And, um, and now I have my retired jersey, number five, showcase in, really? in the hallway. That's so Like right beside um, it. Yeah, no, it's, it's just like really side. cool yeah, having, you know, Rod. Awesome. And then you have Jesse base the third there. So, um, and then just talking about Rod as a person, um, he actually reached out to me and I talked to him. I was able to keep in contact with him. He texted me before games. And, oh, that's rad. Um, talk about picking off Derek Carr. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> hopefully he'll have to send, send me some more, uh, you know, tips on Derek Carr and catching some more interceptions. Yeah, he's with we'll, the Saints now. Yeah, we'll see yeah. him two times a year. Mm -hmm. So have a couple yeah. opportunities for that. Rod's a Rod's a great guy. Great guy and um anytime a guy from Fort Wayne uh makes it out and into the NFL, I, I try to times ten hype it <laughs> yeah. up. So uh those Fort Wayne people are, are some good people. Oh especially the ones that have gold jackets, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean it makes you look cool. Right, yeah. Now we know you gotta ton of things to do but yeah he, to wrap he's only been talking for about for an hour and, an hour and, and a half, half. <laughs> yeah but to wrap up it's everyone's favorite part of the podcast we do a rapid fire all right. so all right, that, <laughs> take a cleansing breath these are serious hard-hitting questions beware it, okay th that is not true at all <laughs> that's not true at all no, is there like a high score or something not we really make a point no, system though well there's no <laughs> way to like do a point right season. Or wrong. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like it's not Q right or wrong. Mm. But I mean, if you want me to, I can like judge your answers. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. That okay. was a nine out of ten. <laughs> yeah. All okay. right. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. What is your favorite play of your career? Derek Carr interception. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it um, back. I love that it. Was, it was probably year two or three. I'm not sure. It was probably one of my favorite interceptions. Um, yeah, it was a pretty cool play. Yeah. I, if you watch it on film, I think you you find it pretty cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pull it up. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be rapid fire. My yeah. Okay. No, I, <laughs> I, I love it. it. Sometimes love it. the rapid fire takes some, uh, takes some turns. It, um, it, it takes on a life of its own. A movie or TV show, something you binge, something you love, something you want fans to watch, anything in that realm? Um, I like Power. Power. Yes. Yeah. We've had a few of a power few people or That's power a good guys one. Uh, I'm not a big TV guy during the season, but – Right. I need to I need to get on my shows a little but bit. But yeah, so off season it's it's time to start cycling yeah. through them. All right. Um your favorite player growing up? Rob Wilson. Okay. That <laughs> <I feel like laughs> <Rob> <laughs> Wilson. Uh Skyline Chili, yes or no? <laughs> That's what I I was hoping for. Turn this. the cameras off. <laughs> <laughs> Got the cameras. I actually in my five years I never had it. In five this is crazy. In five years, you never had it. I've lived here for 18 months. I've never been to Waffle House, which is like a Georgia no-no. So Come you're going to have to make it out there at least at some point. Bring you so some. Waffle House is like, where at that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I give Scott a hard time. He was also really weird about sweet tea. And, and yeah. I'm from California, man. Things simple. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. <laughs> All right. Uh, last one. I'm trying to decide which one I want to uh, ask. If you could have a lifetime supply of anything, what would you want to have a lifetime supply of? Hmm. This, is, this is the first time this question has been asked on this podcast. That's true. Trial. <laughs> it's it's going to say a lot about me. Let me see. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm like all the Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets. I would say interceptions. Oh, <laughs> now <laughs> there it is. And you know what? It's if like we're going to grade the that. answers, bad, if no, no, no. <laughs> if we're going to grade the answers, that, that one gets a 10, 10 out of 10. It's a 10. Perfect place to end it. <laughs> That's a good I'm one, sure man. fans will love that one. Yeah. I just have to get this conclusion on him, Lavendar. <laughs> Jesse, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Scott. That's Tori. Please rate, review, subscribe to the Falcons in Focus podcast brought to you by Ticketmaster. Subscribe 
to the Falcons Podcast Network. Jesse, thank you so much yes. for your time. Absolutely. The man has literally done like 12 interviews in a row. This is his last one. Go home. Welcome to the Falcons, man. We're so pumped to have you. Absolutely. I'm excited to get here and work, man, for sure. All right, guys. We'll talk to you again with another great guest next time. See you.